So many times, simply counting on the way CSS handles errors is enough and you're good to go with using CSS that's not supported in every browser. But other times, that's not really quite enough. You want to do some things to make adjustments for browsers that aren't going to support the new things. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Let me show you one of them, CSS overrides. So here I've got an example. It's just a basic article with a header and a photograph in the background of the header. Responsive design, right? But let's make it more interesting than this. We've seen this design many, many times. I want to instead create a page where the header is always the height of the viewport. No matter how big the window is, when someone lands on this article, the header is going to cover up all of the space that they can see. But then the moment they scroll, the article is right there. The white part of the page is right there. If they have a very tall browser, it covers all the way to where the fold is. If they have a very short browser, it covers just to where the fold is. So how did I accomplish this? I accomplished it by using two different CSS properties that are, actually they're not very new anymore, but they're more on the new side. And this technique itself is fairly new. I've got HTML of a header and an H1. Then applied to the header that, uh, itself, I've got display flex and height 100 VH. And applied to the H1, I have a margin of auto. So what that's going to do is it's telling the browser, hey, I want you to make the height of the header always be 100 viewport height units. And when you go to render the H1, I want you to not only center it horizontally, which is what auto has always done, but I also want you to center it vertically. Margin auto gets redefined and works in a way that centers things vertically once display flex is applied. So let's think about what happens in browsers that don't support display flex and don't support viewport units. So we'll cross them out in our mind and we'll see what happens. Well, the header still gets a height. It gets an auto height, which is just the height that it needs to be in order to fit all the content. And the margin auto works in a horizontal direction. It doesn't do anything in a vertical direction. No errors are thrown. It actually just looks like an older website. We can use this CSS and have it work and not work at the same time. Uh, some people will get one experience. Other people will get the other experience. Uh, it looks pretty good. But maybe we talk to a client or a stakeholder or someone involved with our project and they say, well, I don't really like how the header is really short in those older browsers. I think we need to see more of the dirt. So I could go in here and I could apply a height of 500 pixels, or maybe I should really make it a min height of 500 pixels, which would give it a minimum height so that when the 100 VH doesn't work, it's still going to be kind of taller than it needs to be. Um, and I can imagine what's happening, again, by crossing things out in my mind. What I'm going to do is write display flex for the browsers that understand it. Then I'm going to write height 500 pixels for any browser. Every browser will understand that. And then I write height 100 VH. And the browsers that understand VH will run that code. If you have two commands like this in a row, height, 500 pixels height 100 VH repeated just one right after the other browsers that understand both will run the second one they'll keep the second one they'll throw the first one away that is how CSS overriding works if there are two things that have are tied in priority the later one will always run the earlier one will get discarded so we use that to our advantage in this case uh, the browsers that do not understand height 100 VH will ignore that line and instead they'll just keep the height of 500 pixels. A little bit of a tweak it looks a little bit better than our original option by using overrides to get us someplace. But this example actually is a bit more complicated than I've made it out to be. If we look at can I use and we see all the different support for viewport units and for Flexbox, we can see that there are actually a few browsers that support one and not the other. So in order to do a good job, we should think about what's going to happen if a browser has one and not the other. So here we can see, all right, what happens if a browser supports viewport height units, but it does not support Flexbox? So the header itself will be 100 VH high, and the margin auto will not kick in. It won't do anything because we're not in a display flex context. Again, this 
design could be approved. This design might look pretty great. I actually really like the way it looks with all of this dirt below the headline. But perhaps somebody else on our team says, you know, hey, we really don't want the headline at the top like that. We want the headline to be more in the middle. Now we can't put it in the exact middle, but we could do a little bit of tweaking to it. So let's see, uh, if I put a margin top on the top of the headline, uh, that should push it down, right? Oh, but I can't because it's going to be overridden by the margin auto and every browser understands margin auto so every browser is going to annihilate the margin top so that's not going to work uh, what if I instead make it padding so I could put a margin a padding of 2m above my headline that's going to push it down 2m I should also go ahead and put the padding on the bottom that way in the browsers where it does get centered there's an equal amount of padding above and below, which will keep things centered. So here I'm thinking about the browsers that support stuff and the browsers that don't support stuff at the same time. All right, so we'll do a padding of 2M on the top and the bottom. And uh, this is what we'll get in browsers that support viewport units, but do not support Flexbox. Or here, this is what we'll get in browsers that support everything. Think about that again, right, we're good to go. So really we end up with three experiences. All the modern browsers get what you see on the left, IE9 will get the experience that you see in the center. IE678 and Opera Mini will get the experience that you see on the right. It works out for all of the browsers at the same time. I haven't written three completely different layouts. These are just small tweaks to a single layout, a single set of CSS. There's no reason to go back in later and erase anything out of here if at some point we end up with 0.000% of users on IE6. There's no need to go and change the CSS again. Nobody wants to do that. You're not going to go back and remove support for older browsers from your CSS. There's nothing here cluttering anything up. It's just little details, little crafts taking the time to make sure that it's going to work well all the time for all of the browsers, even though it doesn't look completely the same. There's no reason to keep all the modern browsers hostage waiting for IE678 and Opera Mini to disappear. There's no reason to, to deliver the design that you see on the right to 100% of your users just because 100% of your users can't get the design on the left. The design on the left will probably go out to 80-90% of your users. The design in the middle and on the right will go out to the rest of the users. Everyone will get a good experience. The important thing here is to be able to read the article and to see some of the art direction and get some of the feeling of the graphics of this article. And every user is going to get that with this code. The other thing that people sometimes think is, well, this sounds like a lot of work. This sounds like opening up a lot of virtual machines or opening up a lot of different devices. I don't have time to open up all these different computers. You don't need to open up different computers. Here's a screenshot of Firefox, and I can just click these little checkboxes on and off and see what happens. In fact, Firefox is crossing out the code. I can see what overrides what other kinds of properties and check out the results. Stay in one browser, get it done. It just takes a few extra minutes of time to think through the code in this way and to write really great code. CSS overrides. It's an important part of understanding how CSS works to let you write robust code that will work in every browser.